Hello. Hello. How's it going? Um, it's pretty good. I think I'm over jet lag, maybe. That's good. Getting back to usual. And I'm all jacked up on frappes. Nice. Because, like, I when I was in Germany, we went on a trip to uh, the Greek islands, and I had my first frappe, and I don't drink coffee. And uh -huh. um, so I learned when it's hot, you can, like, drink these iced coffees and, and uh, get a little boost. So I made one. I've been making, I've been experimenting with them, and now I think I'm, like, a little uh, spun. <laughs> You're getting hooked on them? It's okay. Frappes are, like, what got me through, like, at least 80% of grad school, so it's fine. We'll see. I'm like, Ugh. okay. <laughs> um, thanks for taking a look at the um, uh, course. Uh, oh, I yeah. Had I had to create a course um, website for USC. Right. And I was like, well, what does that mean, a course website? Like, do I have to, like, create it with WordPress or something? This works. So I made this Google page, and um, uh, I was nervous when I first opened it. There was a bunch of, like, at the top, there was a bunch of, like, anonymous people, like, looking at it, and I was like, I don't know if you already shared this, but I'm just gonna make some small edits. Yeah, I shared it with some people, um, and said it was a work in progress, and, um, I was just I worried it was students that were, like, looking at it, and I'm editing the information as they're reading it. You were. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, yeah, it's fine. I, I like watching your edits, too. I think it's much better, and it's softer, um, yeah, the only, like, major, I just made, like, small changes that are things, I don't know. It was mostly small changes, except the one question where you're, like, what if I have, like, a really special case? Um, first of all, I watched that video. It was amazing. So perfect. But then I did change, I left a comment there with what you originally had in case you wanted to put it back, but I did write, like, a little paragraph about, like, why it doesn't actually matter that you are so special. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, man. It basically just says everybody is special, and if I make an exception for you, I have to make an exception for everybody. So, no. Did you watch but I the left video? your, I did watch the video. I also put an updated link, so now it starts right where the video starts, instead of oh. the, like, click here to subscribe. Oh, my God. You're, you're so good with tech. That's great. Yeah. So I mean, now everyone should just open and play. These stories about why if they don't take the UX course, their whole life will be ruined. Yeah. And so I think they think they're special. I love this. I thought this video was so funny. It's just like, yep, you are special. Unfortunately, every other human on the planet seems to be emailing me simultaneously about how special they also are. I know. It's sad that we all really can't I mean, they do say we are all special. Yeah, it is true. You know, so. Yeah, I just wrote in there, I was like, just put as like a reasonable amount of information about how you're going to add value to the class into the wait list. Like that's where your time is better spent. Write something there about how useful you'll be to me and don't like write me an email saying like, please, please, please. Like I'll just, my whole life will be over if I'm not in this class. So. Can I Whether or not that'll actually keep people from just emailing you that, I don't know, but. We'll see. I think it will. I think it'll scare a lot of people off. Um, do you, can we delete that comment? Yeah, I just left it there in case you wanted to put it back to what it was. I uh, know. Get rid of that. And I guess we should probably stop writing. It clearly hasn't worked. We already got a student who just wrote me from the Roski School asking for a special pass. Oh, there you go. Just send back a link to this document. There, yeah. Please see my FAQ. I will. Um, at least I have this now, so I can stop that the, the bleeding and keep things organized and be transparent. Okay. 
good for um, people to know. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so let's let's uh, <laughs> so the update on the book, I guess. Um, still no word from Volkswagen. Okay. But we sent that like we sent that Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, um, Thursday last week. So it's only been a couple days and I'm sure it takes a while to get information. Right. It's not like he's gonna disappear in the disappear from that, right? No, I don't think so. He's probably just like A got a lot on his own plate, but then B probably needs to bring it to a bunch of other people that have a lot on their plate and say, When you have a second, can you look at this and tell me how we should respond or how we can still do this? So Yeah. Okay. So I don't think it's a bad thing. It would be worse if he emailed back and was just like tough. (laughs) Yeah, sorry, pull everything out. Yeah. Um, I think silence is better. At least that means he's trying to find something and somebody to make it work. Okay. So uh, maybe we just send a note on Friday, just checking in to make sure all eat. Yeah. Um, all right. So did we decide that we're going to start on chapter 10? I think so. I think we're going to start outlining chapter 10. Okay, um, let me open that. I'm kind of excited. This is like the most vague chapter to me in terms of what we're going to write about. So I'm excited to hear your thoughts on what's going to be in here. Well, uh, what is this? It looks like it's just... Looks like copy from chapter nine. Yeah, it's just like placeholder crap. Okay. All right, so let me open up nine just to grab that outline. Okay. Um, Oh my God, okay. I'm just gonna leave this here. Oopsie, that didn't work. Copy, why didn't it work? Why not? I think you like don't have like when you're saying when you're saying edit copy, it like doesn't actually have the text highlighted. Like the highlight is grayed out. Now it's well. I think you might have to right click on the text itself. Oh, there you go. Okay. I was happy with that one. All right. So this we know, I feel like we have this somewhere. <laughs> we have stuff from this in a lot of places. Yep. Um, including in my notes. Uh, let me see. Chapter 10. I think it might be in like your note that was just like book thoughts or something like that. Like you had a generic book one. Yeah, that has my British Airway drama in it too. Three and 12, okay. Uh, Nothing great there. Um, Well, we'll, I'll bring, I'll deal with this in a second. Okay. Uh, I mean, actually we, it's okay if we do it from scratch. This one's the, the Benjamin story. We know that. All right. Um, and you have that story already, right? It's... already wrote most of it, too. I don't know how to spell that. Um... Isn't that sad? Uh, 
the story is, um, well, I read, you know, you, I read you what was there and you thought it was compelling. Definitely. And then what happened was I wrote that for the first edition and we were trying to jam it into probably the last chapter. And then Lane and Sarah were like, They're, the story doesn't fit and it doesn't really have a narrative um, that's as strong as the other ones. And so even though I'd spent at least a few weeks writing it and researching it, um, it got thrown out. Right. And I don't remember if it got replaced by the one with Grandpa Alex, but uh, obviously, like, that's the one that ended up there. Right. And this story takes place, I think, a few years. They're, they're, they both start about the same time, around 1914, or the early 1900s in Poland. Mm -hmm. um, but this story with a issue with it is it needs it needs a stronger ending. Okay. Um, but I I'll paste it into the chapter. I'll find it uh, some other time and jam it in there. I don't want to put do it now because I don't want to. Yeah. Um, and I and I'm sure we could figure out how to make it relevant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next thing is, uh, so like at a high level, it's really like, what is digital transformation and why the hell <laughs> is it, you know, the last chapter of a book on UX strategy. And then, then it's going to be the case study of a uh, digital transformation at Volkswagen or Fabi if we are in Deutschland. Um, and then for and the mobility outline, sidebar, somewhere in there. Oh, good remember, good memory. I try. Okay, so uh, it seems like the mobility sidebar should go here, right? Before the state, this thing. I mean, it'll probably go somewhere in there because it's going to come back up when we reintroduce VW. Yes. So somewhere yeah. early there in that beginning of the case study, just before it or just after the intro. Right. Okay. So this me and then that reminds me that this story of entrepreneurialism uh, and transformation, obviously not digital transformation, Um, that's where that needs to go. Um, what is digital and what? Okay. The mobility sidebar. And then as far as the, just to have a rough outline, I, I would say, um, it's going to be something like, um, oh, this is going to be super fun a little history of uh, Volkswagen. Uh, it's be good. very interesting company. I have great photos of my tour of uh, Volksburg. You know, they have that little city that like was part of the Third Reich. Uh, so, you know, this it's, it's definitely like a bit of a, I don't want to say like emotional, but it's like we have to tread gently because 
the Volkswagen story uh, of, of how, how, how they started, you know, because, you know, in the relationship to World War II and Hitler. And then, of course, how they evolved into being like the biggest car company in the world and being uh, really ahead of everybody else in so many things, German engineering. And then we need to talk about, you know, how successful they were. They were, and then comes uh, Dieselgate. I don't know how to spell it. It's referred to that in here. Um, Google Docs did want to correct it to Dieselgate, all one word. It did not want to? It did want to. Ooh. I got to learn how to spell diesel probably, huh? It's part, that's just part of my problem, right? Okay, so it's like, let's just see if Dieselgate is actually a thing. Okay, so let's say Dieselgate VW. Oh yeah. yeah, Dieselgate one word redirects there. So um, now I talked to, um, I asked him several times about this, Sebastian, and he said, uh, I asked him if it was like Dieselgate was the turning point for when they really went through their digital transformation. Mm -hmm. um, and he said that they were actually working on a lot of these initiatives before that happened. Okay. But that, like... It just pushed it. That last push it needed. Yeah, it really pushed it where they focused on, uh, you know, electric and uh, being perceived, um, you know, that their brand would be perceived um, as a company that was, you know, concerned about global warming and, you know, and all this stuff. Yeah. So, um, they were then, um, Dieselgate and then, uh, where they are now. I'm imagining that this is like, Two paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's more of like origins. Yeah, the origin story. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I Dieselgate, I, re I really just want it to be one paragraph and figure out a way to make it that clear that, you know, we're not saying, yay, uh, they're better now that what they did wasn't bad and, or everybody else did it too. They just got caught, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Um, but kind of like set it up in a way like, you know, this thing happened, it wasn't right. Um, but here's, the steps that they've taken to rebrand themselves and, you know, and that's right. part of the story. Yeah. Um, I think, can you think of anything else? I don't think so. Are we going to end the chapter then on where they are now? And that'll be, well, we don't this, need anything else to conclude it, do we? Yeah, this is the, this is the case study here. Yeah. Uh, this is the actual case study. This is everything up to here is just set up. Yeah. And it, and it's going to be like um more about um 
I, I'm guessing that uh, it's going to be more about it's going to be more theoretical and not like here's step one of how they did it and here's step two and here's step three. Right. Yeah, like we said, we got away from the the techniques and the step by step stuff with the last the last chapter. So. Yeah. With that said, um, in here, um, we will, what I want to do based, what this part is, we have this outline here, which is this deck. Um, and the talks online at, um, oh God, is it on? Okay. No. Only a portion of it's online here because I was doing this talk a couple of years ago that was um, about going from UX strategy to digital transformation and how I, that career change happened at me. Mm -hmm. And I was touring with that talk in 2018. And so the, this was at uh, Latin America, but at like all of a sudden it gets to, it starts with like UX strategy, then all of a sudden it busts into digital transformation. think at like 18 minutes. This is your strategy thing. Got high. Now I'm not so high anymore because I've been doing this thing and I want to get high again, right? So let's like talk know. about what like, gonna do? you know, getting high from so a like career. You know. Right. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I can't keep touring, right? I'm tired. My kid doesn't like it. My boyfriend's hating on it. I want to stay home. And I get this message, right? I'm <sighs> having trouble with the remote. <laughs> inquiry about this strategy project. So I write him back, right, Linnea? Set up a Skype call. And it's this dude, he's got badass tattoos. So uh, that was like the first time where I tried to explain digital transformation to UX designers. Mm -hmm. And then the next year in 2019, I then just did a talk on what is digital transformation with some case studies. And that is what I think we basically should turn into this section. Okay. So I can walk you through, and that talk I did only three or four times. I did it at two, um, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, the Seattle conference, I did it in Seattle and Convey UX. I did it at two, the same talk twice. And then I did it at Cisco privately. And then I did it at a company in Germany privately and so I think we should look at the German version of the talk because not only it was geared, the audience was now not UX people, but actual people in digital transformation from the mobility and, you know, OEM industry in Munich. Nice. <laughs> so all my examples had to be car examples. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what I think is going to um, to do to be the deal for us to uh, to make work. So I guess I'll start with share walk. How about I walk you through it and then we transpose it to the outline? Okay, that sounds good. Okay, great. So 
let's think. Where are my dumb talks? Uh, it's like speaking in workshops. It was, this is 2020, speaking events 2019. So then it's like, yeah. Okay. And it was called going beyond the buzzwords because digital transformation, just like so many other terms, uh, can be perceived of, can be perceived as yet another buzzword. Right. So I wanted to, it's like, okay, well, so are all these other words we use, maybe even UX strategy. So why don't we, uh, deconstructed. So here's, let's see. Okay. The first thing I do in the talk is I, I talk about how this guy just emailed me from a healthcare company and offered me a consulting project with these amazing terms. Um, you know, and a lot of money and, and, but then he said, it's a digital transformation project. And I'm like, what the fuck is digital transformation? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like right. basically my process. So I, I say, okay, so the first thing I did, what, you know, as a typical American, I thought, well, I'll watch television commercials. And so. Um, I'll play you some of those because they're really funny. What does it take to make digital transformation actually happen? Do you just flip a switch and presto, your business is magically transformed? Not quite. It takes a groundbreaking company like Dell Technologies, a family of seven technology leaders working behind the scenes to make the impossible reality. For instance, we're helping to give cars the power to read your mind from anywhere. We're helping up to 40% of the nation's donated blood supply be redirected to the areas and people that need it most. And we're even developing technology to create a whole new vision for the blind. So while you might not see what we're doing, what we're doing is changing the way we all see the world. Magic can't make digital transformation happen, but we can. Let's make it real. Okay. Right. Um, here, you should see in the context of these, some of these commercials. So right away, I want to take it. Ah! What the fuck is digital transformation? God, I've been on the cutting edge for 30 years. And I, uh, so I watch television, right? That's the next step to find out. What does it take? All right, to so make, that's that. How many? Let's see. It's changing the way. God. We can't make digital transformation happen, but we can. Let's make it real. I want that. I want that magic. I want my car to read my mind. God, if only it could be real. So then I watched more advertising this time on YouTube. Hi, my name's Jim. I come from the near future. Digital transformation and infrastructure like roads and bridges started about now. In this age, ICT significantly improved infrastructure lifespan. Take roads, for example. Looking for underground cavities that could cause sinkholes once took a lot of time. Fujitsu's AI Zirai can now do it in one-tenth the time it once took. The same goes for bridges. The world's first AI technology for analyzing vibration data collected with sensors helps us to identify and address internal damage to bridges. So we resolve 
both constant labor shortage issues. Fujitsu will continue using all types of data to protect all types of infrastructure. Let's kickstart digital transformation. By the way, we still use this road in the future too. Fujitsu, shaping tomorrow with you. Oh my god. I learned so much from that. But at the same time, I still don't know anything at all. And there's more. <clears throat> A retail banking digital transformation is happening, and it's happening now. The consumers want their banks to match their digital lifestyle, and the market is growing. Three billion users will access retail banking via digital channels by 2021. So how do you win customers and grow? For 40%, the user experience is the most important factor when opening or closing an account. I think of the music out there because I'm just going to talk over this because we don't need to listen to their crap, right? We can look at it. What are we seeing? We're seeing a bunch of people no longer interacting with each other because they're all connected by their phones. Miraculously, this man is making 37% more revenue. And this lady, she's not surfing or enjoying the beach, but she's raised her customer retention by 14%. And this dude, he's not sleeping. He's having a cross-channel experience. Not sure what the other channel is, though. We can be robust. We can be innovative. We can be secure. We can be optimized. Oh, my God. It's just so full of... Ish. You can even go to a conference if you want to learn about it. Check this one out. We don't need to be here. We could be here. The new event which covers everything. <laughs> So apocalyptic, right? <laughs> this digital transformation is clearly going to be the end of the world, right? No more, no more intellectual property expo. No, that's out. Digital transformation in. But seriously, such a ham. So you can't just watch advertising to learn about the next job position you're going to get, right? I had to do go back to the drawing board and start reading some books. So I did a deep dive. I went to Amazon and ordered every single book that had the word digital transformation. And I tried to read some of them. There's so many. So I decided I would just read the ones with the blue covers. It's funny. <laughs> you have to pick something, right? Why not pick something random? So she's nice, right? She's this British woman, and she's got a blue cover, she's got a book. It's, this is the first one if you want to like get into this. It's kind of like bottom-up, beginner's guide to digital transformation. She's got her own methodology called acronym B-U-I-L-D. It stands for B-U-I-L-D. At that point, and, I didn't have it um, so memorized. Anyway, seriously, though, yeah, it's that very, way. very user experience. -oriented. So let's get I developed it more later on. Um, into her thing here, which is what the BILD is bridge and bridging the gaps between your company, the company it's meant to serve, and the changes happening around it. That's like the first thing, which means um, like if we think about it in uh, like Volkswagen, let's just say, so, you know, they were a company that mostly made diesel uh, cars. Um, you know, the way that they worked was that every um, 
uh, all their brands from Porsche, you know, to the lower end ones. Um, they all kind of basically were just their own little companies with their own digital uh, division. Mm -hmm. And that's what they, that, you know, and all the, some of the parts didn't make a whole. And so they needed to build a bridge, not, you know, in so many different ways. And so you get in there, whether you're a consultant or the C, you know, uh, chief information officer or, or chief, there's all the, there's different titles now for digital transformation roles. Um, and so cover is like, let's say you're in there and you need to figure out like, what is it that the company does that, you know, should be leveraged and looking at like, uh, what are, what are their, what are the assets that, that make them unique? but also like what are the barriers that are preventing them from transforming? And then our favorite word, iterate. Got to iterate. Um, right. And like science, uh, in short cycles, tests with real users. So it, as you can see, it really overlaps with um, UX strategy and lean, uh, lean startup and all. Um, you know, but it's, this is all enterprise, like the idea that, you know, you're taking a company and the ones that are the most interesting to work with are not the companies that are, are, are digitally native, but the ones that are brick and mortar. Like, you know, my favorite case study is Princess Cruises because they're a cruise ship. You don't know, think about how they could possibly, um, be just a digital company because it's so much about the experience being on the cruise. Right. Um, but those are the ones that are the best examples. Although Netflix is a, is a famous case study as well. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. So, but the idea is like that you go in and run and, and uh, have lots of experiments going all the time. Like, like Google famously does this same with Amazon and you see what works and you're open to that. Um, and then you take the best ideas and you leverage those and, and take those to the next level and that you need to, uh, really like involve everybody and get all the different resources, um, to get to work together cross functionally, uh, to there to be communication that the meetings are, they, they have an agenda and that, that you fulfill that agenda by the end with here are the actions. I mean, some of this is so obvious, but. I think when you have a slow moving corporation, um, they need to change their ways of working um, and they need information to be disseminated uh, so that everybody knows about all the latest and greatest things so that everybody, you know, one hand knows what the other hand's doing, especially when it's like an octopus like Volkswagen. So that's her, um, the way like that's her version of her that's her framework just like how ux strategy has a framework and right. then she talks about the business models the customer experience um and then internal processes so the first two are very ux strategy e or and service design e and then but this third one is getting into how the company works together so they could, could transform because if you think about let's say um, an easy example is Netflix because uh, think about the type of person that would work at Netflix when they uh, first started in that you would just order a DVD um, on their website and it would come in the mail. Right. So it was like a fulfillment house right. that was before your time. But no. You remember that? Yeah. So then think about when they became a streaming company, um, how that changed the way that who worked there and how they worked together and how they slowly had a terrible transformation moment where they tried to just get rid of like, cut it off like a dead, like a, you know. Yeah, make everybody quit cold turkey. <laughs> bad limb. The, the, what they, when they wanted to just like go straight into streaming and get rid of the whole mail order and people freaked out and they had to kind of go back, mm -hmm. you know, so that one was 
that's an example of when it wasn't done right. But now they're transforming into a company that makes movies, a right. production house, you know, while, rather than just have to pay everyone a percentage that they should make it. And so think about like the people that work for Amazon now, like I have a friend that works for them who's a movie producer. Mm -hmm. And so they have to completely, they, they, you know, it's a true transformation. Um, so that's, uh, and so if he talks about different types of processes um, in the book, functional decision-making uh, um, and um, how they can work together. And then I contrast it with this guy's book, um, David Roger, um, who is from Columbia University. And I think they have like a special program that he oversees and he's very academic. Um, and his book is uh, a very hard read. Um, and uh, he has lots of these beautiful maps and, and so I learned how to explain them by using the Netflix one. So let's talk about like an incumbent and you have, and a challenger. So Netflix would have been the incumbent back at the beginning. No, ne Netflix was the challenger. Wait, who's the incumbent? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I believe the incumbent's the one who, who's already in place, right? Yeah. So like then, Trump's yeah, because the challenger in. is Netflix. They're coming in and saying, like, we're going to mess up the way that we do this. Yeah. The incumbent is the person that already is there. The existing. Yeah. Right. And they party. need to be destroyed. Oh, yeah. or not, depending on what it is. So here's the incumbent. And, uh, and here's their ways of working where, you know, you go in there and you see these guys with the blue shirts. Um, and if you ask them like, what's a good movie recommendation, they'd be like, uh, I don't know, I just work here. Or they'd point to the new releases and, um, and then you would go and just turn over boxes and you're kind of left on your own to pick right. a movie. And then if you didn't like it, you had to pay these fees, right? And then you contrast that with Netflix when it started where you just sign up for a monthly trial and then you get sent these DVDs and they come in the mail. And so you look at it as there's two different de differentia differentia de differentials, not just one. There's the value proposition. So one is like, get new releases, go to the store, uh, pick it up, um, versus, uh, um, fill up. I mean, if we go back in time, uh, go to the website, put together a list and then have three movies up to three movies at a time sent to you for a flat fee. Um, those are very different, right? Right. Um, so here we have no late fees, easy access, wider choice, personalized recommendations. And then you look at the value network. And so this gets into the business model and the way the company operates, like their cost structure. So all of a sudden um, they have a different pricing model. They've got an e-commerce website. They've got data assets and recommendation engines. They've got warehouses and no retail costs because there's no Netflix stores, right? Right. So that's very different. And as a result, um, ultimately, uh, Blockbuster uh, didn't want to partner with Netflix, although um, I believe Reed Hastings went in there and he blew, uh, got Blockbuster guy blew him off. Um, and so then he talks about in the book uh, the that to really know if you um, can beat the incumbent is you need to is what you're offering, your new offering, the, the transformed version, going to radically displace their value? And whatever you do, um, is there a barrier to, uh, to be imitated for people to copy you? Mm -hmm. And this said, the same can, uh, can be said 
for somebody who's trying to do like a blue ocean company or, you know, a disruptive company. Uh, So do you see how like it's. Yeah. Really similar. Like the way I used to describe it was to say, it's like UX strategy on acid, you know, it's just next (laughs) level. Um, You know, and then you look at Netflix now and it's got so much of their own content all of a sudden. And so in the talk, like I go back and talk about what I did at this healthcare company and the process of, um, you know, they had bought a ton of little companies and were trying to take all these little companies and put them together to create a value chain uh, for start to finish for how to um, bring new drugs to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so, I had to figure out how to do online research. So I applied the the methodology of UX strategy, you know, using personas and doing uh, actually online guerrilla user research using LinkedIn um, to talk to other people to figure out uh, other people in healthcare who didn't work for any of these companies, like why they use certain products to understand these segments that were different segments based on job roles Mm -hmm. because this is a b2b play right and then um creating you know this is iterate phase creating just prototype after prototype after prototype of how it could possibly be um and then doing uh competitive research and this was my process it wasn't like Someone told me, oh, do this and do that. It was just like the only way I could get my head around something that I lacked subject um, expertise in. And uh, and there were so many competitors, oh, my God. And yeah. that a lot of the competitors turned out to be these big software companies like IBM and Apple and Adobe. Um, And that you weren't looking at products that you were comparing them um, at a platform level. I mean, digital transformation is definitely about building platforms, building, like when we look at BW, it's about how, that's why they're building this like software OS doc, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely like building something that's like, uh, you know, white labeled perhaps or, or, uh, useful so that you know kind of like open source in a sense you know like what tesla's doing with their uh you know with their processes and and uh their software for their car Mm -hmm. um so that was a interesting learning curve to learn about um these new ventures and then what i had to do was um figure out like, okay, where in the value chain was their opportunity and where was their, where was a red ocean? And in blue ocean strategy, they have this uh, tool, one of their tools um, is this uh, strategy canvas. And so I plotted, um, the different companies in terms of where they were strong on the value chain. So if you look at like company A did a little bit of drug discovery, um, but a lot of uh, manufacturing and market access. Mm -hmm. And so then when you took a bunch of the companies and put them on top of each other, you could, sorry, that just jumped forward. You could uh, really see, uh, who the commonalities and the differences and also understand like maybe we shouldn't be attacking the entire value chain. We should just be focusing on a part of it because maybe, uh, and this is kind of interesting now with COVID and everything because we're now all of a sudden, regular people are just talking about like phase three, when are we going to be in phase three with the clinical trials of right. vaccine, blah, blah, blah. 
and learning like that, uh, like, can we um, accelerate the timeline of bringing a drug to market? And thus, what are we skipping over? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're really seeing disruption in healthcare now um, with these companies that are, uh, I mean, all kinds of interesting stuff with, from biohacking to just to like just testing on people before the time, like in Russia. But anyhow, that's that. And then you need to come up with a rollout plan. But in order for it to work at a company, you need, there needs to be a cultural, cultural change because the people have to change job titles, who they work with, maybe where they work, working remote. And a lot of people, particularly older people or people that have been with the company for a long time, don't want to do it. Why should they? They've been there for a while. They're used to making some money. They're at their ends of their career and they don't want to work longer or work harder um, in a lot of cases. So that, and they also don't want to feel like they're being like forced out by, you know, the millennials or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so then I talked about these uh, examples um, and, uh, and I love these examples and I especially love the princess cruises. Uh, but I can't, I don't think we can talk about it now because cruises are so, um, looked down upon. <laughs> yeah. It's not a, not a popular thing right now. But the princess cruise thing. I don't think I show it, but what they did, I just showed the Porsche thing here. Um, you know, they, they just did small things like uh, when you went on a cruise um, and you wanted to, let's say, uh, find out what time the meal was, the meals were being served or where different buffets were, or where different entertainment was or where your friends were going to be at a certain time. <clears throat> it all, it, it all required, uh, you know, just word of mouth, um, or looking at, I, I forgot the word for it. Um, might have it in my notes. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, let's see a dramatic, let's see. Uh, it was called it was really funny. I can't... It had a newsletter before? Yeah. It, 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 had, it has this funny name, this newsletter. I don't know if it says it. Where does it say the newsletter? Oh, yeah. It was the daily. It was called the Princess Patter. Ah, there you go. Right there. And they digitized that. And all of a sudden, then the crew who make up a large, uh, a, a, a big portion of the people on the boat could all of a sudden say, oh, there's going to be more people over at these buffets, or, oh, the bathrooms are, are you know, need more toilet paper, or um, we, we, this event, uh, you know, th these people playing whatever up here, um, this one could use more people, or this one's full, or, you know, it just changed, it made things way more optimized on the boat, you mm -hmm. know, and less waste with food, less waste. So it was really... It's an interesting, like, it seems to me, like, if I could be, work for any of these companies, it's the ones that were brick and mortar or, um, you know, old school companies where there's really a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Um, that said, like, I mean, there's just amazing examples that happened from Walt Disney and I mean, New York Times classic. So um, I talk about those and... And then I just talked about like at the meetups, like, so are you interested in working in digital transformation? And then I show, uh, in this case, it's in Munich, 25 miles, like, look, there's jobs in digital transformation. Cause a lot of people haven't even seen that there's like titles and jobs and that you could even be an intern. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then I need to add a message for business executives. Um, but I have actual jobs uh, in some of my decks uh, describing them. And it has words in them where it talks about UX, it talks about design thinking and so forth. And so the end of the talk was like, please be advised that today's buzzwords might be your competitive advantage tomorrow. Or to, the old talk was today's buzzwords 
might be your next job title. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. I'm glad you did. Yay. Yay. Okay, that makes sense. So digital transformation seems more like UX at like a company level. Like you're you're looking at a much higher view of how things could be shift around and change to improve not only like customer experiences but business processes. Exactly. Very okay. good. Oh, Thank actually, you. I um, was listening all along. I know I was mostly just going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I have to show you one other funny thing that mm -hmm. we can mention. It has a lot about design and thinking and has a lot uh, I don't know if I have this in here. God, did I not have this joke in here by this time? I may not have it. I don't think I had it. But it was this joke here, which was after watching the commercials, I needed to learn more. And this is what needs to go in the book. Uh -huh. um, uh, that I decided to take a course and get a certified. Um, so I took a 47 minute online course and uh, in digital transformation. Now you're a professional digital transformation specialist. In 47 That's minutes, it can be done. You know, but then I go on to say, and here's what I learned, and this is what I want us to include, like how the term evolved. And it started with digitization, um, which is thinking about taking uh, media, for example, from uh, analog to digital, right? That was just digitization. We went through this whole phase in publishing, you know, like think about like all the magazines that were offline, that if they didn't go online, they were going to die. Right. Or they had online versions. And so that was just digitization, right? Like, oh, we're going to digitize our asset. Like think about like Getty, Getty right. Image, right? So then came digitalization, which still exists and still a very common word. Um, and it's focused on using technologies to improve business models and processes. So the example was the New York Times because basically uh, they put up like a paywall so that you could get the New York Times online. Um, but, and they had to change their process, their business model, but it really wasn't a true transformation in terms of how they were making the content. Like the way the New York Times works now, like they laid off a ton of people that were doing, if you watch the Netflix doc on them for a few years ago, they laid off all these people who had the title, it wasn't editor, it was, I, I don't know if they were proofers, copywriters, or they were basically, uh, they, they had to shift so that the main role of the people were out that were that were out there collecting news were doing so with video cameras you know mm -hmm. with, like literally not just interviewing people but doing investigative journalism and collecting the content so that it could there was just like full-on multi multimedia on the website and that the way they present the stories now in the new york times as you know it's and if you look at the guardian very similar like full-on you can have these amazing experiences where you can see these stories and, you know, it's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, so digital transformation takes it up to that next level where it's diffused throughout the entire company and it, they change the way that the company works. And that's what the goat's wagon is, is doing is instead of, is that they have one digital division that, and then all these other little companies uh, go and use that same division and that the software, the software that they're going to use for the VW is going to be used for all of their other Volkswagen, excuse me, uh, cars under that brand. And there's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. Forgive me if I'm going really fast, but I want you to get the basic. No, it's good. Let me see. 
Look at that. Founded in Berlin. Uh, oh my God. Uh, they own Audi, Bugatti, Ducati, wow. BMW. Like, um, it's pretty amazing. So when I went to uh, my place, Volksburg, and saw what they were doing and learned about um, all the different uh, ways that they were changing even their assembly line. Interesting. Um, they're just going, I mean, they're going to be, it says somewhere, you know, 100% electric by 20, whatever it is. I don't know, mm -hmm. 23, 25, whatever it is. But it's just, I think for sure they've got to be the biggest company in the world doing the biggest. <laughs> I might be over the top here doing, you know, just because of them being such a large company and selling the most cars. Let me see if I'm right. Yeah, that's pretty insane if they all, if it's all digital, or if it's all electric. Toyota. <laughs> Volkswagen was second. Uh-oh, VW better catch up. Um, I feel like this is also like the individual brands, though, not like the Volkswagen group of like all the brands. That's very true. It's probably just the Volkswagen brand cars. see oh no now we're going to mit's digital transformation program look in two months jessica you can do digital and you already have all that ia stuff what yeah. uh why would i do it in in weeks when i could do it in 47 minutes that's a good point <laughs> yeah that's a really good point i, I don't know um See here how it says Volkswagen invests up to four million uh, digital transformation. Um, so we have access to a lot of content that's on the web, but we assumably will be getting these um, some inside scoop through mm -hmm. Sebastian and. Uh, and talking about their whole we program right. which I know a lot about um yeah the largest sorry to answer your question from before the largest automaker toyota is first only beating them out by like like eighty thousand vehicles for 2017. i don't know what the numbers are now but the volkswagen group is second to that at uh about 10.4 million vehicles sold in the year that's, that's, that's pretty big. <laughs> hey, I want this job, Chief Disruption Officer. I think that'd I'm, be a perfect title for you. I think so. I'm pretty disruptive, or maybe just annoying. Um, I I would love this job. I would love. I wonder. It would just be fun because you could also just like interrupt people and be like, "That is literally my job title." <laughs> yeah. You can't say anything about it. Or I get shop projects maybe midstream. Yeah. Just cause mass chaos all in the name of you know disruption yeah disruption uh it's a new punk rock mm -hmm. um according to my last book um but now disruption is bad so disrupting people it, it. so so that was probably a lot um to, that's a good overview, I, I guess. Um, yeah, I have a much better idea of what, like, I, even when we've been talking about it, you're like, digital transformation, digital transformation, I didn't really have a good handle on what that was or what it meant, and I was just like, well, I guess when we write chapter 10, I will learn what it is. So, but I feel like it, it makes a lot more sense now. That's good. Um, I mean, I uh, have had it on my website and my um 
my, I think on my LinkedIn saying I do digital transformation consulting and nobody has ever asked me to do a digital transformation job in the last couple of years since I put that on there. No, that's a lie. I did get offered something from uh, someone related to the, uh, something with German military. And then because I didn't speak any German, uh, they lost interest very quick, quickly. Um, yeah, it's a little difficult. Yeah. I mean. They, but now you're fluent, so you'd be ready. Yeah, now I can, I speak enough to order a beer at, at, um, at a bar. So, and which is enough, or a beer garden, yeah. right? Beer garden fluency. So, um, so with that said, I think it's just an interesting, regardless of whether it's a buzzword or uh, a title that's going to disappear, it there's stuff behind it that's definitely it's kind of like, regardless what you call this funnel, regardless of what you call it, it's definitely a thing that has to happen for big enterprise companies. Yeah. And because the book, uh, you know, is me pivoting from focusing on startups to focusing on enterprise, I felt that it was important to have it in there. And because mm -hmm. my readers uh, are growing up um, and hitting you know, 10, 15, 20 years in the field of uh, UI, UX, uh, or strategy, they may be ready to what's, you know, like be thinking about what's next. And I think that's what's next. I mean, I think you know, it's, these, it's fitting. It's I, basically, t digital transformation is basically UX strategy all grown up. Like it's just the, the higher level version of it. I think it's important for people to understand. I'm glad you think so. Um, because I, I want to, I want to explain it in a way that makes sense to people. That's not just thrown around a stupid, uh, buzzwords that, that talk that's like the talk that explains it. Um, it doesn't need to be tongue in cheek or funny. Uh, for sure. Um, although we could have the blue book line. Um, uh, there might even be better digital transformation or books out since those ones. Um, and then I also, you know, I mean, that's why I'm hoping like, everything is working with BW because uh, I want to tell their story. Right now I'm looking for the photos of the tour of their factory not the uh let's see i went in october yeah when did i go why is it i'm having just let me i want to find it just so we it looks like it's Yeah, I think this is it. Did I go in August? I thought I went in October. And I thought I had a million pictures. Um, looks like it's it. This has got to be it. Yeah, I think this is, this is Berlin though. Oh, I know. Um, oh, that's not responding. We'll try one more time. Okay. Just because we might be able to, not we might, we can use 
the photography um, that I shot. I wonder if I had my iPhone 11 by the time I shot these things, because I think that was the point of me getting it. Okay, um, another thing I'll, I'll talk about was my experience renting the Tesla this weekend using Turo. Oh, exciting. How was that? Full on mobility weekend. Nice. Yeah, it was amazing. And I have some really great pictures of uh, the Turo app. Uh, and the Tesla UX, oh my God, so amazing. That's pretty uh, wild. Their whole interface is wild. Have changed the air conditioner, like, have you, you know how you can like put up the animation of where the air is coming out of the vents and you see like a little animation and, and you can like grab the air where it shows it streaming, like let's say it's pointed in this direction and mm -hmm. you can grab them and push it, and then it's just like on you. Yeah, that's wild. Um, oh my god! <coughs> um, so amazing. Okay, okay. Oh, I remember when I went there. It was. Now I'm remembering. It was after. Ta-da! Okay, it was after I met Uli. It was... Um, in January. So, so they have this town called, I'm gonna say it wrong, it's called Volksburg. Mm -hmm. And and then there's the spinny little will that happens over it. Fun. Okay, so it doesn't seem to want to look at these pictures. So I guess we'll give up. Even though I hate giving up. Um, but at that on that tour that Sebastian took me, I got to see uh, really just like how they have this place that they open that's open to the public, and they have this city that's basically just for people that work at Volkswagen with a movie theater and it's, it's basically a shithole and, <laughs> uh, and, um, but it's like this, it's almost, it's like an amusement park for kids. Like people pay money to go to this place. Um, kind of like Lego land in concept. And, uh, but people live there. They don't live at the factory. They live in this, in, in the city. Um, but the factory is what you're saying is like almost like an amusement park. It is an amusement park. Uh, okay, I see. I thought you were saying yeah. the whole town was like an amusement park. I was like, how weird to live there then. <laughs> well, that'd be like living in Disneyland. Let's I'd be see. down. Folks. Coming in. Wait. See, doesn't that look amusement party? Uh, oh, mean, yeah. The world's largest factory in Germany. Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg. I don't know how to say it. I'm so bad. German, God. I'm so embarrassed. Um, so let's get this correct. Let me just see what this auto stat. This is weird. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Okay. It's like they're. It's like an aggregated thingy thing. So it's this massive factory that goes on for forever. Actually. Interesting. And uh, but it then it also has these pavilions, and you can go in and learn about the different brands and. Uh, and there's ice skating in the winter and there's food areas and and then there's wow. all these kiosks with all this digital stuff um explaining you know their mobility services and it's just fascinating hmm. um i highly recommend going there um 
So I think I would be sad if we couldn't cover it in um, the book. I think like we if need- we couldn't describe this Volkswagen Disneyland. <laughs> No, if we couldn't talk about it, it, if if the BWK study got thrown out, but I don't think it is. I don't think so. Plus, by the time we write, like, what is di- digital transformation, they will probably have gotten back to us by then. Yeah. I'm always really negative. I always think the worst. I don't know what that is. Um... So, so with that, I'm totally um, procrastinating. It's okay. You're not procrastinating. You're researching. We're exploring. Is there anything else we should include? Getting inspired for writing this chapter. It's all important. But you see how it's all related. It that is. That walkability goes here, though, right? Mm hmm. I mean, I think it'll fit best here, too, because this is one of the few chapters where we're talking about things much more abstractly, as opposed to when we're like, step one, make your landing page. Step two, read the sidebar on mobility. Step three, make an advertisement, you know? <laughs> Like, I think yes. this, it'll fit better here, and it, the tone will fit better here as well. Just yeah. trying to, like, we zoomed in in so much detail in the last few chapters on, like, here, like, we're going to hold your hand and walk you through step-by-step step exactly how you can do this experiment or exactly how to design a prototype. And then now we're kind of, like, zooming back out and saying, like, okay, well, if you're able to apply this UX strategy, these kinds of techniques at, like, a, a product level or a business idea level, like, how would you do that at an enterprise level? You know, what's the, what's the grown-up version? <laughs> yeah, we should capture those thoughts. That's, those are really good ideas. Um, I don't even know what to call this thing. And with how this thing is going to be for some people the next ladder, next step on their career ladder, you know, it's, you know, um, types of opportunities in the market. Um, and, it's, and it's definitely for grown-ups and marketing people. <laughs> uh, like, it's, there's so much to do with, um, you know, like one of the things I was thinking of doing and not wanting to do, but was it seemed just for a lot of the job ads was that I needed to be certified with Salesforce. Interesting. Yeah, it was kind of a gap in my knowledge at one of the at the one of the positions where I didn't really understand the capabilities of Salesforce. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. I mean, even if people don't do this, like, even if it's not the next step on their career, I think it'll still be useful for, you know, the, the emerging strategist to the new UX designer. Like, it's good to see yeah. how, how important these skills are to yeah. master because I mean, they to can me, apply it in a much bigger context someday for you. Yeah, it's inspirational. Like, um, I don't know if I have any of my, uh, uh, I just have the Polish version here. Um, I 
Okay. So, for example, um, in the last book, or in the first edition, um, the chapter after Designing for Growth was Strategists in the Wild with interviews with for strategists. Right. And that was meant to be inspirational mm -hmm. to, for them to talk about how they got into strategy from UX design. Right. So this is replacing that chapter. So I think it, it's fine. I think the placement of it's fine. It's making it uh, forward thinking. And then it, and then the book ends with the same uh, denouement very little change to it or you just kind of sum everything up and we write that as close to the end of turning in the manuscript as possible mm -hmm. oh boy getting there okay Let's see, where do you think we should start? We should probably figure out what, why the hell is this, is this last chapter? Why are we talking about digital transformation? Maybe we should start figuring out what's gonna kind of go in there somewhere. Okay, maybe we can look at my deck and bring in, you know, the A, B, C, D, E of what we're gonna cover. Okay, that sounds good. So how do we make it do the, like the letters like this? Let's see if I can just copy that in there and not have to think hard. No, that didn't work. Do I go like insert letters? You should be able to, there. Yay, okay. So over here is this and over here conveniently is this. And let me get you out of there. and. Uh, so let's just keep the thing you hit. There we go. Nope. Once. Okay. And I wonder if I outlined, I bet you I outlined this talk when, before I started on it. I'm sure I did. Okay. So Let's see, the story it starts with not the job part. Let's start. Hey. It, it could start out with why I even that I started out researching it because somebody offered me a job. Potentially. Let's put it in there and then we can Okay. We can always take back out. Because uh, I think that's common for people to get offered things that they d don't know how to do, so they like immediately try to get up to speed behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So I had to uh, do a deep dive to figure out what what the heck it was. Okay, um, I don't think I need to talk about the YouTube commercials, because I think that was a joke. Um, is it worth mentioning that there are, uh, one can look at everything from YouTube commercials to, or is this, no, now we're getting into A, we don't need to write about it, right? Yeah. Okay, but then we're in the second part, like, uh, just write, uh, looked at YouTube commercials, to certificate programs. Uh, uh, numerous books on it. Um, I personally like the ones with the blue covers. And 
the names of those books. It's weird how I lost the artwork, but you're not going to believe it, but the books are here, I bet. Uh, one of them is called The Digital Transformation Playbook by David Rogers. And then uh, this other one, ooh, oh my God, it is Digital Transformation by Lindsay Herbert. Now, I don't think I'm going to want to like break down her thing, right? Like that's stupid. Yeah, I think we focus on the, um, more what we were talking about towards the end, we were talking about like what it means to, like what does it actually mean? Not necessarily like frameworks for doing it. I think we need to start out with like, what actually is it? Something about, you know, like when you're talking about what does it mean to digitize something? Okay. What is digitalized, all that. Okay, how about, okay, so, uh, okay, so go to D and talk about the, is it right to say the genesis of the terms? And it's digitization to digitalization to digital transformation. You'd like do the carrot. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, and I think that is very helpful for people. Um, then, oh boy, there's, oh my God. I think this like, what we really need to hit on here is, is talking about like this third part, this, because they've read this whole book. So hopefully at this point they have like some better idea of like UX strategy. I feel like what we need to hit on is like simultaneously how it is so similar to UX strategy and makes complete sense to have in the book, but also how it's different and why you need to understand like those nuances. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I think when we get to see, we're going to have to do some research on it and see if there is a standardized framework now, because I mm -hmm. haven't looked into it for a full year. Um, and, you know, I mean, we can look on Amazon, there might be like a new best selling book. It's very strange to me how Books are strange. It's strange to me there's a million UX design books and one UX strategy book five years later, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm happy about that personally, but it then makes me question why there's 10 di digital transformation books. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of people, including myself, write books to get... Uh, Um, more consulting, uh, more famous or whatever, for consulting and speaking opportunities. Okay, uh, but uh, yeah, it's the same old crap. They had the best digital, I saw a link below that it said best digital transformation something. Oh my God. So this is, <laughs> look, it's only on, on Kindle. Uh, so this is the newest. Oh, please. A design thinking playbook. Oh. 
This is new. This is new. I mean, since I did my talk. Yeah. I can't even imagine, like, going to a publisher, like, I want to write a book on digital transformation, and then having to list out the competitors, because I had to do that for my book, and uh, I would just look at all of this and say, uh, I think this subject's been covered to death. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Oh, he's got a paperback. I mean, do we have to buy one of these books now? He's five stars. Um, Digital transformation from within. I feel like just reading it would like elevate me in some way. <laughs> and he's an award-winning expert. What the hell? What do I do? What do I do? No, I don't even know what I did. What did that take you so to? Bad. Um. Um. Uh. Uh. Here. Oh my god. It looks like theory. And my, managing an innovation lab is not the same thing as doing digital transformation for a business. Yeah. Uh, okay. I like the deep, practical, sometimes cynical perspective. Yeah. Um, that's good. Um, I'd like, I'd love to be described like that. Um, but then it's like specific cases, best practices. I don't know. It seems like he's talking about innovation labs as if that they're, that's all it's all about. That's a very narrow. Yeah. That's not what it is. Yeah, I don't. Look at, and just FYI, all these reviews are from 2019. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Okay. So then the other book is. Oof, there's so many. Look at that. We could get you the student guide. You're still a student. No, you're done being a student. Yeah. Poor Lindsay's. Okay. There's so many. Oh my God. Beyond the prototype. The future of digital transformation post-epidemic. Interesting. I gotta send myself this. I can, so I can not read it in my bed. Let's see, uh, how do you get the free thing? I forget, there's like a, a little taste that you get. I think it's the, oh wait, do you have sample. Kindle? Yeah, send the sample. Yeah, you send me that, you send me that, thank you. Oh, as long as we're, oopsie, as long as we're doing this, why don't we send, uh, we'll send samples of those other books and then we'll, I'll take a look at those. Um, I'll make them pay for this, my link click. Sure, send me a free sample. Can't wait. Okay. Um, oh my God. Look at this guy. He's got 181 reviews. Woo. Fancy. That's fancy. Survive and thrive in an era of mass extinction. Sounds scary. I like it. Restorative technology advanced from punch cards in common use as recently as 1970 to today's solid state drive or SSD non-volatile memory storage devices. 
Oh, this is about like <clears throat> literal digital transformation. Like it's talking about like the rise of new uh, like hardware to support like improved software. Is this somebody's name? Yeah. Um, wow, 469. It's the building blocks. I like this is not a theory book. This is not a theory book that discusses the ideas and concept, but a practical book that describes the proven digital capitalized capabilities as the building blocks of digital, inc comma, including an approach to assessment and improvement of the digital capabilities to wait, capabilities capability to achieve successful. Let this book therefore care. Therefore, you always want that in a description. Caters best for digital practitioners. If you're not a practitioner, refer to the book 77 Building Blocks. What? The simply explained, written for the general public. Oh my the, god. The, the 77 Building Blocks for Dummies. What is all this shit? This model covers the, these capabilities. Wow, we. Wow. That's neat. That's super neat. Um, wow, it makes me not want this to be a chapter anymore. I, can, I don't know how I can, whoa, did I just buy that? No. No, the sample. Okay, oh, wait, hold on a second. I gotta pause, um, I think. Hi, right, this is Jamie. Okay, so that's an interesting name. Um, what are we, I feel like we're going down a wormhole. Let's, there's too many books. Yeah. I mean, now it's like there's hundreds. You gotta go with just lots of the blue covers. Maybe. Uh, Oh my God. Oh my God. Digital uh, transformation is used so differently and so confusingly by so many people. Um, so far, the most practical book on digital transformation. Actionable. Didn't you, is that spelled correctly? No. Uh, um, let me just look at that. That's really funny. See what a jerk I am. Such a jerk. Oh, that's so funny. I just lost my page. I deserve that, huh? Okay, so, um, is it here? Think so. here. Okay. Okay. So, um, I think we should go back to our outline because there's it's too many books. There's too many books. Yeah. Uh, so I sent myself three. Uh, how about if I send myself two more? I did that one, right? Mm -hmm. Ew, Agile. Uh, I did this one, right? The, the white one. What? This yeah. one with the weird head. And then I, I, that we got. Oh, boy. Uh, that one I have. Um, Make disruption work. And that one I did, right? The Innovation Lab one? Yeah, I think so. This one's got one review, poor guy. And it's on Wiley as well. His wife must be, you spent all that time writing that book and you only have one review? I mean, a free sample. Okay. 
Let's see. Okay, one more and then this game is over. Okay. So gross. What about this one? Oh, did we already do that one? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Enabling oh. a digital, evolving a digitally enabled Nigerian public. Maybe we need a digital, this is what we're, we're trying to do, digital transformation for dummies, basically. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wait, look, a digital transformation game plan with 34 tenants. That's amazing. I only had four, and this one has so many. Ugh. And then there's a handbook. Okay, will you remember these two so I don't, okay. I'm gonna wait, get... the handbook just came out, like, in the last week. Okay, I gotta get the shit. All right, send a free sample. Okay, that's one, and then the other, and then we don't talk about that until I get my, until I, I have until you check out your samples. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. I can read for free? Just send me a free sample. Look, it even has the word strategy. Yeah. Okay, so that's fun. Why are the stars blurry? It's weird. Is that Anyways, like back to the outline. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Over here, why are the stars blurry? No, seriously, I'm, are you concerned? Deeply. <laughs> are my stars blurry? If Jeff's stars blurry and Alex's stars blurry, mine better be, or I'm messed up. Oh no, my stars are blurry. Ah! Oh. Okay, um, I'm, I'm just closing this page. Sounds good. Okay, all right, so back to here. So we do, we, uh, I have a feeling we're, we're not gonna talk about these books. Uh, um, there's numerous books. Uh, I think I need to look at them and say something about why, how they, maybe I'll read, uh, 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 if the snippets are enough, I'll write a, a, a tiny sentence about each one on, in terms of what they focus on. And then we can see, I'll probably have to do it in a spreadsheet. There's so many. <laughs> Now I'll do it in notes, um, and we'll see if um, there's a common theme or if there's a framework or something. Okay. Okay, then uh, after that came his framework, then came the case study. Uh, so, uh, and then how about I mention the most famous case study is Netflix. Uh, versus Blockbuster. Can um, we do this genesis of the terms? Are we going to say there, like, what digital transformation is? Yeah. I guess between that and the books. I have a definition that I like that I pieced together based on two or three different definitions. It's, okay. um, uh, coordinated digitalization changes efforts at scale diffused through all aspects of the business. Yeah. Okay. Like, I love how this, you know, do you want to, do you want to paste that definition in here? So we have it later. No. Okay. Um, now I'm being like Terry. He has to be like sarcastic about everything now. Is that like a, a, a teenager thing? I think so. I don't know. I've yet to grow out of it. I'll let you know when I do. That's true. Okay, so...
All right. So do you think I need to mention it's getting long here. Let's go ahead and put it there as an F that we may not hit, but the F is my 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 negative experience <laughs> and cynical experience of uh, um, a one year project I worked on. Uh, I believe it failed, that failed. And why? So annoying. Hello, it's Janet Anderson calling from the high school. Earlier today, we sent out a message from Mr. Shotwell about our ASB red. Hello, it's Janet Anderson calling from the high school. Oh, really? Earlier today, we sent out a message from Mr. Shotwell about our ASB registration and yearbook ordering and ASB card ordering and so forth. So I hope you saw that. And right now I'm sending one about our textbook distribution that will happen on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. I've given a very detailed step-by-step -step picture of the process. And when you get here, you will find arrows to follow and we will try to make it all very speedy for you. And especially given the heat that we've got going on and COVID. this week. So please check that out, look at it carefully and, um, Call us tomorrow with any questions. If you cannot come on either of those days, you don't need to notify us. Uh, in fact, it would probably be difficult if you did try to notify us, so we will uh, give you an update on Friday. Uh, so please take a look, and I look forward to seeing people here picking up their book, new book bags on Thursday and Wednesday of this week. Thanks so much. The school calls me too much. <laughs> um, are we done? <laughs> are we? Okay. Uh, you might talk about the tools I used, like the strategy, Canvas, and my competitive, uh, What's it called? <laughs> uh, Your, oh, the competitive research tool, whatever that's called. What's the tool called? My tool? <laughs> my toolkit? That tool? The tool we spent like months on? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. No, the, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so that's this, that. Um, uh, maybe. The competitive analysis matrix is what it's called. Yeah, great. And other, I think most famous case studies, we are, we don't, so we got that. Oh, then my favorite part is um, if we include it, although um, interesting jobs, um, out there doing DT. I mean, just start calling it DT now because it's such a long word. Select, word. right, yeah. Digital transformation. Okay. Uh, I think that sounds good. All right, so I think we've got a lot of stuff that we could do. I think this is going to keep us busy for uh, six sessions, and this is two sessions, and, you know, and then Hopefully by then, a couple weeks from now, we'll get this. Yeah. I bet you by the time this is, if we haven't heard from them by this, we'll know. Yeah. All right. Okay. But hey, we know where we're going with chapter 10, so that's exciting. That's right. We did the outline. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's something. Okay.
got something. All right. So I'll see you tomorrow at uh, 12 o'clock. All righty. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.